what kind of work do uh, staff do in these types of jobs uh, that maybe are entry level or you know somewhat a little bit after entry level, even volunteers or internships? Uh, Roberta. Um, so our folks, um, I actually have four of our interns here, and if I may, uh, hopefully I won't embarrass them, but I have the privilege of having four of them here. So we have Mike Shea, um, Amanda. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. Desiree and Ebony, so they're here. Um, so I would encourage anybody that's interested in um, looking at internships here at Stockways to speak with them and they can um, fill you in on the things that I look at. Um, but what we do it, um, is to provide about 250 uh, tours of our local transfer stations for fourth grade students largely fourth grade, but we also do some middle and high school field trips as well. Um, students arrive on a bus with um, their chaperones and their teacher. So we have a really, really great opportunity to make a difference through um, these ripples, whether it's the teachers talking to other teachers, the parents talking to other parents, or the kids talking to siblings. So, exciting. So our tour is um, correlated to the California Department of Education standards for fourth grade students um, in the science, math, and um, English areas. And that's really, it doesn't necessarily sound like a big deal, but it's really big for teachers. Teachers are so pressed to um, make sure that every minute they spend in that classroom is accountable and is making them there's um, helping them to reach those goals that they need to meet for students. And if their students don't perform, the schools are not accountable. And it's, it's really, it, it's really um, a pressure. So it's very important that that happens. Um, our tour um, presents the four R's as, um, as Jordan talked about, the reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot, um, as well as the whole concept of global climate change and how really important that is. Um, so the teachers sign up for um, these tours on a voluntary basis, and as I mentioned, tours are, for our transportation is provided. So the things that our um, environmental um, education associates do, or EBAs, um, they have uh, experience in introductory training. Um, so for about the first, I don't know, month that they're, uh, they're working with us, they're trained on the four R's, Really getting a whole sense of the environmental education field, in particular uh, integrated risk management and how really, really important that is. Um, so that they can, once they know it, they own it, they can then present it to students in their own voice, um, which is really important. Um, they um, They learn, as I said, mentioned, they learn about ways, the intricacies of recycling, which is a pretty amazing and intricate field. There, there are um, very few right answers. Um, oftentimes, our um, folks answer with the, uh, the standard answer of, well, it depends. <laughs> What's the right choice? Is it paper or plastic? Well, neither. It's, you know, there is oftentimes not a real right or wrong answer. So we, we want to make sure that they have the ability to understand the inter intricacies of that. Um, they, so they give tours of our um, education center. We also provide um, continuing education or professional enrichment where they go on tours of local facilities um, as well as participating in many workshops on topics like special events, um, cultural relevancy, um, service learning, involving students and incorporating student voice. Um, but the reality is they're the front line for many of the residents in Alameda County. It's their the interface that, that our folks have with um, our organization. So we are incredibly lucky to have um, folks that do such a good job. We've also had a history of an internship program. I started it in about 2003, and 
for the most part until recently, it's been specifically focused also on environmental education. And the internship was, uh, the program was funded through many different sources, uh, two main sources, actually Stop Waste has helped to fund it, and also the Altima uh, Landfill Settlement, um, the board that runs uh, a fund that has to do with, every time our waste goes to the Altima Landfill here in the county, it's taxed, and some of that tax, uh, some of that money is put into an educational fund that nonprofits can apply for. So we received a, a tremendously generous amount of funds over many years from that fund to run an intern program. And what the interns started off doing was a lot about similar what Roberta's um, team does, in that they they would a lot of us focus on their own enrichment. So we would take it was standard to take a trip to the Dave Street Transfer Station a couple of times. We actually went out to the Altamont Landfill. We got to see the landfill itself. They would learn about the four R's. Um, and we started with that as far as environmental um, internship because of kind of what Jose was saying, waste is so tangible. You know, we all make it, we all have sort of responsibility for it, we all have the ability to improve it. So it's just a really on the ground way to, to sort of connect and, and make a difference. Um, and so we've, we've done that, we've had nearly 100 interns over the last 10 years or so. Um, and one of the things they do now that we've sort of gradually progressed into, we had them doing waste audits for the facility, we had them learning about the floors, but in the last few years, they've actually been running something we call the Zero Waste Lunch Program, where they'll actually, at lunch, stand out in front of our recycling bins and just help to keep the streams clean. Yeah, because as we know, folks don't quite get organic waste yet. They don't quite pay attention to bins. It's just dump and run type of a thing. So they'll stand there and facilitate that experience. Um, and it, mainly focuses on our school kids. So we see roughly 50,000 field trip visitors, which is our school kids and their parents and chaperone, chaperones and teachers. Uh, and so our interns are there at lunch, sort of engaging with the students and saying, this goes here, this goes there, and having some dialogue about why this is important, why do we care about keeping our streams clean and, and diverting waste. And as a result of that, we've really improved the, the um, amount of waste that we've been diverting. Um, right now, we're actually in the process of so we got so crazy with this program that we were trying to get to this, what they call the zero waste sort of holy grail, which is technically 90% of waste diverted, which um, is really, really tough because, you know, there's some things that, that you know, it's difficult to, you can divert them, but it's a little bit sketchy in terms of what's happening. So an example would be a Mylar package. You know, yes, we can take that and turn it into another product, but at the end of that product's lifespan, it's probably going to end up in a landfill. So we're just temporarily parking it in a different product, but it's not truly recyclable. So, so but we, because of that, we were doing plastic bags, mylar things, um, differentiating between different kinds of compost. We had 90% at during the, with the lunch room trash, but now we're kind of stepping back and trying to look holistically at the whole facility and, and just basically go to a three bin system, but this time center wide. So we probably will end up with 80% conversion or 78% conversion but it'll be center wide. So I, I'm actually imagining that our overall waste diversion rate will actually improve. So we're sort of in that step back process now, but I'm working with our current facilities manager to uh, to sort of get this thing kind of global. And so in terms of, back to Jordan's question, which was entry level positions, definitely the intern program is one. We also have instructional <coughs> positions. And so we teach 24 different science classes for K, K to 12 students that visit the facility. About four or five of them are focused on environmental education. So a piece of what instructors do is environmental education with those students. Um, so our on-call instructors and our, and our regular instructors teach those classes. Uh, we also have an exhibits team. And so one of our main core exhibits is called Bill Nye's Climate Lab. And it's all about climate change and has an emphasis on what we can do about climate change, how we change our behaviors, what energy choices we make. Uh, and so the exhibits team was heavily involved in creating that exhibit. And and now we facilitate that experience. Um, so there's definitely an element of our exhibits team that works on environmental projects. Um, our facilities manager, you know, by definition, is focused on green programming and really trying to build up Chabot's green infrastructure. So we have solar panels on the roof, high efficiency heater, uh, heating and cooling unit. Um, the building is designed with some green features or south facing windows so it maximizes the solar um, heating, radiant, sort of radiant heating of the floor once the sun is hit by design. We have a, we've partnered with the Big Collaborative um, and we have a rain catchment cistern that we put outside. Uh, we have uh, active composting on site. I'm trying to build that program now. So what we're trying to do now with our marketing team um, is to sort of 
create signage, which will create a visitor pathway through those green exhibits or infrastructure things that we have. So just talking about the solar panels and the zero waste efforts at lunch and uh, sister so that folks kind of get that we're a green business. And we got certified as a green business about five years ago. There's something called the Bayer Green Business Certification. And you have to meet these minimum criteria in certain areas like your waste diversion and your energy use and your water consumption, water conservation efforts. So if you meet these baseline criteria, you get a certain amount of points, then you become certified. So we, we went after that. It's not as tough as the LEED certification, but um, we're very proud of that. We put it on our business cards. We, we, we definitely use it and put it out there to the public. So it's, it's something that, that we do take seriously. Um, but all that said, I'd say one of the components I'd like to see our organization sort of formally embrace is there's not one position, which, you know, I think in some ways is the reality of this field, that it's tough to be the environmental person, which I kind of was, but as I mentioned when I was environmental education manager, I had that title and I was project managing, I didn't have staff, I just was supervising projects. And so I was sort of driving that, but I also, there was a limit to what I could do because I didn't have purview over the facilities and I didn't have, you know, so there's some, some things where I would collaborate with other staff to sort of drive things. Uh, and now that I've stepped into this other role, I'm feeling like there's a bit of a void in the vacuum. So I've been pushing up to the, to the senior team. You know, we really need to take this more seriously. We really should put more of our efforts into this. It's going to pay back. There's, there's obviously the environmental bottom line, which we're all, I think, miserable aware of, the importance of reducing greenhouse emissions and waste stream and all that goes with that. But there's a lot of monetary savings as well. And a lot of these, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit when you start diverting waste. We've been able to reduce our dumpsters dramatically. We had, we had the equivalent of six, six cubic yard dumpsters being emptied um, every week uh, when, they, when we first opened the facility. We're down to one six cubic yard dumpster once a week. So, and we're just recycling a lot more. So, so it, it does make a difference from that's the bottom line, the energy that we're saving. We're retrofitting with LED lighting. We have a project we're partnering with pg and &E, and they're helping to sort of um, enable us sort of Front, front up the front us the money that enables us to do that retrofit. Um, so being creative with that, but that's ultimately going to save us, I think, ten, twelve thousand dollars a year on energy costs by the time that's all done. So there's a lot of that. So it's sometimes you have to sell that side of it. You know, even if you're in the core, you feel like, well, I'm doing it because I want to be green and I want to do, I want to do the right thing and all those things, which I certainly definitely believe in. But using that angle is really important as you sort of start to develop, you know, program. And then again main message to you guys is, is don't wait for it to come to you, build it. You know, see an opportunity and, and, and grow it. You know, a lot of, it's it's so much easier now to, to get in. When I was when I was getting out of school in 92, it was like, environmental science, what are you, you going to do with that? What is that? You know, what are you going to do with that? But now it's like green, green, green. I mean, our president is so much behind all his initiatives now. It's, it's a different, it's a different world, and yet I think we still are running into the same kind of hurdles. So. So don't be shy about kind of pushing the boundary and trying to collaborate with others and build, build the team, because that really helps. So our current capacity right now, we're really supporting our interns with, uh, with uh, basically their ESA program or, or senior projects, whatever they're working on. So we help them, you know, get the tune out and really uh, help us out with the supporting of the programs that we do. So in a sense, we'll run the program by them and see how they feel about it, our approach, our methods, how the, you know, basically if they're in tune with, with the current, you know, student era. But I think in the future, what we're really looking, looking for is something really along the lines where we create those opportunities for students to, to first meet, you know, the, you know, if you're going to be working and doing an internship, why not get paid for it, right? If you're going to be, if you're already interested in the field, why not earn, you know, some money as you're going along those path, pathways instead of just volunteering your time? So you know we're really uh, excited to look for those opportunities to provide for students to to move forward. I, I wish I had that opportunity. I was there to be able to say, I'm interested in this field, but I just can't just give away my time because I need to again, you know, the real life, right? You need to make bills, you need to home expenses, car payments, all that stuff. But in a sense, if we're able to front load again, investing, I think the whole idea is investing in in this whole field. Once you start investing, it's definitely going to pay back in the long run. So we're looking for ways to, to maximize those efforts in the future. Okay.